crack cocaine, how I got addicted was I used to sell drugs and then one day I decided to try it myself and that's how I got addicted to it. William McKellar. How long were you a drug addict? 17 years. Doing time in jail? Yes. I did a nine months. Could have did a lot more, but I did nine months one time. William, how does somebody that's addicted to crack cocaine for seven years get off of that? It's gotta be a- 17 years. How does somebody do that? How do you get off of it? Got to find God. And how did, how did God find you? It was on a Friday morning, June the 14th, 1997. I was just tired of using it. And I asked God to remove that addiction from my life. And he did. And I found that I have not had to use any more since then. Oh, but uh, I found God because that's who I needed, you know, and I, I, was, I never was a person of prayer, of prayer, and then that particular day I just turned and prayed to God and asked him to remove that addiction from my life. And I also, during that prayer, I told him I'd rather be dead than keep on living like this. You know, because it was a horrible, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible life. I was homeless, almost dead, and I was just tired. And I found God, and I've been moving forward ever since. You're working in a church now? Yes, I do. Tell us about what you do at the church. I do prison ministry, support of our church. I, uh, I'm a music coordinator for the church. I go out and I do the food pantries and stuff like that for the church. I help out with uh, all the men stuff that need to be done around the church. And whatever, of all services that I can be to the church, that's what I am today. Now William, if somebody else is struggling with alcohol or drug addiction, what would you tell them to do to overcome this problem? I would tell them that if they're really sick and sick and tired of using and, and, and really ready to give it up, I would say give it to God. Keep your hands out of it. Let God do for you what you couldn't do for yourself, because if you could do it yourself, you'd have stopped or you never did it. So I would always say to anyone, let God do for you what you can't do for yourself. Keep your hands out of it. Let God put his hands in it. <laughs> you know? And I, I say that because, like I said, I couldn't stop until I found God. You know, it wasn't about anything else. I'd been to 50 addiction places until I found out I couldn't stop. And, you so know, you would say Jesus is the answer? Jesus is the answer. It's the only answer. Because, see, in order for me to stay stopped, then once I do get clean, what I have to remember, too, is I got to have a made-up mind. And I can't stay clean on the same mind that got me clean. I got to... Now I gotta put out there some work. I gotta do some things and I gotta get involved and do things to keep myself clean. And that's how I got involved in the church and with Pastor John and them and started doing a lot more things. Today, I have a full plate every day. I do something every day. I go out to schools and stuff and talk to kids about the using drugs. I've done that on several occasions. I've been a national speaker at a couple of conventions, uh, Narcotics Anonymous, different things like that. So, you know, it's just been a, it's been a real journey, but it's a hard road, but the road continues. You know, and what we have to remember is that once an addict, always an addict. I'm just not a practicing addict. Wow, yeah. Now, John, let me, uh, let me ask you this. I'm sorry, I said your name wrong. Let me ask you this. If somebody can't admit that they're doing something wrong, can they get help? 
Do you have to admit that you're helpless and you got to get over this? Until you can get honest with yourself, you're not going to be able to get over it anyway. See, because it really doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't really matter what she thinks. It doesn't really matter what anybody thinks. What really counts is what do I feel and think about myself. I can't do it for nobody else. I have to do it for me. You know, I tried that. I smoked up two houses, two wives, six kids, all that stuff. And until I decided that I could do it for me, I couldn't quit. You know, because that's always been a crutch to run back to. Something, you know, that's why we have to remember that once in that, we're always in that. And people going, some people are going to forgive you and some people who are not. You know, we did a lot of horrible things out there using. Some of the same people that hated me yesterday loved me to death today because they seen my walk and not my talk. So, You've been forgiven. Right, 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 right. So, you yeah, know. Once a sinner, always a sinner. Right. The difference is some of us are saved because we gave our life to Jesus Christ. And what we have to really, this is the most important part. God forgave you a long time ago. God forgave you the day you was born when he died on the cross for you. You know, all your sins were, 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 were saved then. We got to learn how to forgive ourselves so we can move on. You know, that's very important that you learn how to forgive yourself.